How's that? Is that that's better. There we yeah. go. Good. Gas now, right? Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode four of our Kitchen Design Podcast. And this week, we're going to be talking all about ovens. Uh, so I'm Andy Brown from Artisan. I'm joined, as always, by my co-director, Danny. That's me. And uh, we've got our very special guest from AEG. Uh, it's one of our, well, it is our favorite appliance brand. Let's face it. We love AEG. Uh, and so uh, from AEG this week, our special guest is Louise Stalker. So she can be talking all about ovens. Uh, say hello, Louise. Good afternoon. How are we all? We okay? All good. Thank you, Lou. It's lovely good, to see you. your face for a change after all this lockdown. We haven't seen you for so long. It's, it's been far, far too long. But look what, what we can do now. Me all the way up in Yorkshire, you guys down in the, the depths of South hey, Wales. Yeah. 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 It's got us plus points, hasn't it? Uh... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am looking forward to coming to see you as soon as I can, though. Absolutely. So We're looking yeah. forward to a big AG party. Oh, yes. <laughs> We do that well. <laughs> yeah, overdue, overdue. I know we've been sober since we've seen you lot last time. Oh, <laughs> don't believe that for one second. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for having me on today. Um, and we're going to talk about ovens. You're welcome. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk all about ovens today. But um, you could tell us a little bit about uh, AG before we start. Um, and I, I'm right in believing it's like it's one of the oldest um, appliance brands, isn't it, AG? Yeah, so we actually belong to Electrolux, um, which is our overarching company. Um, we've got three brands in the UK. So we've got AEG, um, which is our premium brand. We've got Electrolux, it's nicely in the middle. And then we've got Zanussi, which is our mass market brand. Um, and uh, Electrolux is Swedish. Um, they've, they've been in business now for just over 100 years. So we had our 100 year anniversary not long ago. Um, and we're the second largest appliance manufacturer in the world. So um, just behind Whirlpool. So um, very oh, yeah. proud of our, our heritage, our Swedish, Swedish heritage. Um, we did used to have two businesses. They split recently. So we had Electrolux Professional as well, um, where we um, supply to one and two Michelin star chefs all across Europe. Um, and what that has enabled us to do is to lean on all that professional heritage and bring that into the domestic marketplace as well. So a lot of the appliances we talk about today were initially developed um, in the professional working kitchen. So something that, you know, we've been able to really um, lean on um, in all our kind of R&D technologies and things that we, we bring to market. So yeah, really, really great brand to work for, really great company. Um, and we support you guys as independent studios with um, our premier partner offering as well. Um, so um, any of your customers who, who buy appliances, appliances of ours could get things like the five-year warranty, um, so, uh, which you can't get anywhere else, only through an independent studio. So, yeah, that's yeah. a big thing for us is the five year warranty. Mm -hmm. and, it works really well. It works really well. So, it is a big plus for the selling point. The customers, uh, they, they all want where they're spending a lot of money and they just want some peace of mind. And it gives them just that. So, it's really, yeah, we, we, uh, we appreciate having that facility. So, uh, Electrolux obviously Swedish, but AG has got its roots uh, set firmly in Germany. Um, and I believe it, it's, it translates as a German electric company, doesn't it, AG? It does, yes. And I don't know if you've seen our recent TV advertising campaign. We've gone right back to our German heritage. So they actually pronounce it. They're doing a bit of a test at the moment. So it's a -E -G, um is the, the advert. Um, so it's all about challenge the expected. It's a, it's a really premium execution. Um, seems to be cutting, quite, cutting well through in the market as well, which is good. Um, but our, our factory is in Rothenburg in Germany. So I don't know if you've seen the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So that is where yeah. that was filmed. Um, I've had the pleasure to go there. Um, it's a lovely little place. Um, the beer kellers weren't there, though. I was a bit upset when I went, so I have to say. Um, we called yeah. Danny the child catcher as well. It looks a bit like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, all our ovens are made in Germany, um, yeah. all come out of the factory there. Um, really, really good operation um, that we have, yeah. So um, a big thing with ovens at the moment is uh, is the steam oven. Um, more and more people are starting to uh, switch on to steam. Um, but but why would I want a steam oven? That's, uh, that's our first question of the day. Um, oh, where to begin? I, I, I'd like to actually speak from personal experience because I have a steam. I'm very lucky to have a steam oven at home. I probably wouldn't have one um, if I didn't work for Electrolux, but I've, my eyes have been obviously open to the benefits of, of using steam. Um, 
I guess the, the first thing that most consumers instinctively think is a steam oven probably won't do everything else that a normal oven would do as well. So um, first and foremost, all of our steam ovens are normal multifunction ovens as well. So you can do everything that you would expect, as in grilling, um, true fan cooking, um, you know, there's all sorts of normal things you can do. Um, and then you've got steam on top, which is like an added an added layer of technology um, that's in the ovens. Um, you, you also get, especially in AEG, you get things like turbo grilling. So there's extra functions that are available. Um, turbo grilling is great. It's, it's a bit like a, a spit roast in your oven. So if you like rotisserie chicken, for example, and you use the turbo grilling um, function, you get the, the similar result. Um, but it has all sorts of things. You can prove dough in there as well. And the steam actually helps that um, as well. Um, you can even keep warm. Um, there's a pizza setting um, mm. and then you move into steam. So the simplest way I try and describe it, if anybody who doesn't work in the industry asks me, is we have three levels of steam. So the first one, we, we call it low humidity and it's basically 25 percent steam with 75 percent heat. Um, and what that's great for is cooking things like a chicken. So if you want a juicy succulent chicken on the inside, but you want it to be nice and brown and crispy on the outside, um, low humidity will give you that result. Um, it could be that you want to, I don't know, you want to do Yorkshire puddings, um, which, you know, if you want a really good rise on your Yorkshires, being a Yorkshire girl, um, you know, we're very competitive when it comes to this area. Um, <laughs> A little bit of moisture in the cavity, but with that heat, gives you a really good rise on things like Yorkshire puddings. Um, and then you move into medium humidity, which is 50% steam and 50% heat. Um, that's really good for reheating food, which I think we might talk about later. Um, but also another real good top tip for this, because we're going into barbecue season, is um, if you wanted to put all your meat and everything on, on medium humidity, for a period of time and then finish it off on the barbecue it really enables you to make sure that your food's cooked properly but again it'll be really moist and tender um without having to cremate it to make sure that it's exactly. cooked yeah. yeah yeah me and andy are definitely definitely interested in that feature for this year <laughs> absolutely um and then you've got the full steam so high humidity um and that is for everything from rice so rice is amazing in a steam oven um, it takes 40 minutes to do. It's worth the extra time. I promise you. So for every okay. cup of rice, you get a tray. Really, really simple. For every cup of rice, you get a cup of water to match it. Pop it in the tray. Put it on um, full steam. Or there's actually a rice um, function, um, which you can select. And it switches off once the, the function is complete and your rice is ready. Um, you can do pasta in there. You can steam all your veggies. Um chicken if you you know you like steamed chicken or fish um it's a really really healthy way and also it means you can get rid of your counter top steamer that you might have or um you don't have any pans on the hob on the go it's all, all nice and done in the oven um so that's for me i use steam oven all the time so um and i've moved you know less you know less time at the hob you know just chuck it in the oven and you can kind of forget about it it's it's it's, it's you know different functions for different things is brilliant so we haven't got any more questions now louise you've explained it all <laughs> <laughs> i think the great thing the okay. great thing for me about the the, the aeg steam oven is that um it, you basically you tell it what you want to cook and it just it, it sets it up on uh, it, exactly the right function so if it, if it thinks that it'll cook it better with steam then it will use steam it's got everything at, at its disposal hasn't it so it just uh yeah. well, a lot of customers, they do think when you mention a steam oven, um, it, they, they haven't got a clue. And they, they, they assume that in their head, they just picture steaming vegetables. And that's all they can do, like, like you put them in a steamer on the hob. So we're forever going through um, the benefits of it with them. So um, it's really interesting to get um, another, you know, you're, you obviously, this is your, your job day in, day out, is, is uh, doing the steam oven. So it's really nice to hear somebody else giving us a few tips. Yeah. Uh, I think most people think, most people do think of steam as being the stuff that's rising off their, uh, their, their potatoes on the stove when it's cooking, but it, it's completely different. It's, um, you can't see actual steam in an oven, can you? It's, uh, it, it's no. just, a, it, but it's, it's generated by boiling water um 
and it's it's a it, it just transfers heat, doesn't it? Much better than the normal Much dry better. air. It, so does. it conducts the heat better through the food. Is that right? It does absolutely, yeah. And it's so easy to do. There's it's, it's like a little canister um, which is built into the oven. You literally pull that out, take it to the tap, normal tap water, um, fill it up, um, pop it in, and then it will just obviously put the put the water into the oven um, that yeah. way. And it beeps to let you know if it runs out. So. Um, yeah, and that that water lasts a long time anyway. So you know, two three times you can leave you know leave it in there, and it's mm. it's good. So yeah. How how do you how do you clean the steam oven afterwards? Yeah, a couple of ways. So the on our AEG ovens, we've got two um, steam cleaning functions that you can select. Um, one's for a, for a more intensive clean. So if you've been cooking something that's particularly messy and there's more residue, um, and so. You, you can select either one of those. Um, I always use a bit of white vinegar as well when I'm doing a steam clean. Um, that just really helps to lift off and, and loosen any residue within the oven. Um, once it's complete, you obviously need to wipe it out because it'll be a little bit wet inside. So um, but everything, it just, it, it makes it that final clean and wipe through at the end really, really easy and, and simple to do. Yeah. Right, so, so mm. obviously it's, steam cleaning function on the on the steam ovens so um what's the difference between that and a pyrolytic oven so pyro ovens um yeah they they essentially it's like having a self-cleaning oven really so whereby in years gone by I certainly i've done this as well is you've, you've picked that number out of the yellow pages for the man to come and clean your oven at home pay him 150 pound to come and do it man or woman sorry um and that they come round and they'll do that with this you simply select the pyro um cleaning function that's available on our pyro ovens um and um it essentially the door locks you have to remove the side grills you have to, you have to take everything out have an empty oven if there's anything really um any really bad residue we recommend that you get rid of that first just scoop that out wipe that out and then select the pyro function um, it, it heats the oven up to 400 degrees. Um, the door locks as well, because obviously that's a very high temperature. That's really, really important. Um, and it literally turns the residue left within your oven to ash. So at the end of the pyro function, um, when it's cool enough for the oven to be able to be opened, it'll unlock. You open your oven and you simply wipe with a damp cloth the ash that's in the bottom of the oven. Um, and it's it's brilliant. Yeah. That's it was one of my um, Saturday morning jobs. Is that to do the pyro clean on the ovens? Is that that bad point? Oh, wow. okay. so it's, quite, it's the actual liner in the oven is is different because it has to take that sort of temperature. So is yeah, it, yeah, and there's a special casing all the way around the the um, the door as well to protect yeah. it as well. Um, so and one of the questions we do get asked is, can you have start, steam and pyro together? Um, because you do have two different types of seal on the oven door, what for steam and pyro. So yeah, I think it's a it's a Kevlar seal on a pyro together, isn't it? Because of the heat. Yeah. Yeah. And historically we've not been able to do the two. So we, we but we do have one oven in the range, which is um it gives you that quarter steam level um with a pyrolytic function as well. So you don't get the full okay. steam, but you can have the 25% steam and the 75% heat version. Yeah, uh, if you want the best of both worlds as well. Um, mm. So yeah. So what then is um, the the other self cleaning type of oven, or is not fully self cleaning, but it's a catalytic yes. liner. So what's the difference there? So that um, it's it doesn't turn it to ash, so it doesn't get as hot as a pyro. So it'll take it up to um, two hundred and fifty degrees, um, and it kind of once it gets that temperature it'll just make everything really really easy to clean off at the end so okay. it doesn't completely turn it to ash but so it just, just needs a little bit easier a little bit of elbow grease a little bit just yeah. a little bit yeah not like full pyro though go full <laughs> pyro that's what i say full pyro <laughs> is the way to go yeah yeah absolutely if you can get two ovens have a steam oven and a pyro i mean that is exactly. the dream exactly yeah. exactly living yeah. the dream then yeah of course I mean, on every or almost all AG ovens have a, a feature called steam bake, which um, just explain that because it's not full steam oven, is it? But it is a feature where it gives you some steam. Oh. It does. 
Um, so obviously, um, in this day and age, the world has gone a little bit baking mad ever since the Great British Bake Off, um, all the different cookery, cookery programmes, you know. Especially since lockdown. Absolutely, yes. So the, the, Britain has got a lot of bakers now. Um, yeah. So we obviously recognise this as a, as a trend. People are baking more and more. Um, and our um, R&D team said, right, what, what can we do to support the consumer when they're, they're baking? Um, especially if they don't want to go full steam, because steam is really good for, for baking. So we decided, uh, we brought to market um, Steam Bake. So um, essentially, it's a very small well in the base of the oven. Um, and you literally get 125 mils of water. You pour it into the little base. You press a button at the beginning of the cooking process. And it gives you a burst of steam for that first 10, 15 minutes. So if you're baking bread um, and you want to get a, a really good rise from that, you know, from that bread in a nice crust as well, it will, it will enable your bread um, really good for flans, really good for um, cakes as well. Yorkshire puddings, things mm. like that. Yeah, yeah Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> there we are again. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, steam bake. It's it's not available on every oven, so it is more um, on your kind of your entry level AEG. So if you just want yeah. a little bit of steam, and you can have it with pyro as well. So because um, obviously when you get get into your full steam and whatnot, you, you, you kind of got your quarter steam as well, which you can use for, for some of those things. Mm. Mm. There's lots of different uh, recipe ideas on the, online for that, and I think you get quite a few in the um, uh, in with the appliance itself. Some little uh, cooking guidelines. You do, yeah, yeah, in the manual, yeah, you certainly do. And um, there's lots of YouTube videos as well that we put out there as well. So there's content been been shared all the time. Mm. Well, we love our AG ovens in in the studio. With, uh, <laughs> we've got them all running, and we're always playing around with them and cooking new things. But I haven't tried the rice yet, so we're going to give that a good go. It's amazing, honestly, it makes such a difference. Yeah, definitely want to try that. And of course, the the daddy of all steam ovens is the the sous vide. Sous vide. Oh, so uh, yeah. Yeah, explain what what this what sous vide means. So sous vide is French and it means um, under vacuum. Um, so probably before I started working in appliances, I, I would have called this boil in the bag. So that's what some people believe it to be. <laughs> that is like the preconception yeah. of um, sous vide cooking. So, um, so so you might if you've seen Master Chef before, um, you might have seen them get their food, put it in a bag, and then place it in a water bath. Um, mm. that is essentially what um, cooking is it's, it's cooking things over a really low temperature really gently for a longer period of time um, and we have a sous vide oven so if you imagine the ovens I talked about before this is kind of like the fourth steam layer on top of it is sous vide cooking um, and what, what happens in the oven inside the cavity we recreate the water bath environment within that cavity um, and also because on the sous vide ovens, we, we enabled the temperature range to be changed within one degree. So um, sous vide cooking is all about really, really precise um, temperatures. So yeah. if you need to cook at 56 degrees, for example, for a medium rare steak, you wouldn't get that in most ovens because they go up in increments of five. So it's really important to have that um, one de degree accuracy within the ovens. Um, so if I was cooking fillet steak, so I remember I, I went into a restaurant once, once I'd learned about it and I was speaking to the chef there and he'd made me a fillet steak and I asked him, how did you cook this? He'd used sous vide to do that. Um, and you'll often find that in, in most restaurants that they do this, you'd get your fillet steak, um, pop it into a sous vide bag. So you need a very a special bag as well for them. Um, and you can get a vac sealer. You, we, we do sell them where they're, they're a bit like a warming drawer, so they, they can fit in, into a U kitchen unit, or you can buy a countertop one as well. Yeah. And you literally um, suck all the air out uh, and vac seal your food tight into that bag and, and seal it up. And you can, you can have different flavours in there, um, a bit of butter, um, a bit of garlic. You don't need a lot as well. That's the beauty, because when you vac seal food, um it, it's like a mini marinade so all the flavors are really intensified inside the bag so you actually don't need a, a lot in there um once you have your let's say in this example fillet steak you'd pop it onto the oven shelf select the sous vide setting um and and basically fill up your water tank and, and off you go and you can leave it in there at that temperature 
for as long as you want. So if you've got a dinner party and you want to do eight fillet steaks because you've got eight people coming round, you'd literally bag up all your steaks, put them in there, leave them at 56 um, degrees for your medium rare. And once you're ready, you take them out and literally finish them off in the pan to get that caramelised um, finish to the steaks. Um, and when you cut through them, they're so juicy, tender, and the, the colouring um, is really, really consistent all the way throughout. So you get that real nice consistency um, throughout your, your fillet steak. And really you good. Use all of the juice that's left in the bag to make a nice sauce then, or gravy uh, with a nice yeah. red wine sauce. Oh, nice, yeah. Oh, I did a port red wine sauce the other week. That was amazing. Oh, Leslie on my team introduced me to some um, port port red wine reduction you can get on amazon mm. in a little jar oh genius i'll send you a link to it <laughs> yeah brilliant i look yeah. forward to that i love doing steaks it's my favorite thing to do so yeah, we've uh, done a few in the showroom over the years yeah we? most saturdays with sous vide cooking steaks here so uh we're really really up on on that on that it's it's, it's completely different it is. It it's is. different doing the sous vide one over and i think even if people who, who don't like rare steaks um when they've had a sous vide oven, I mean, it's still lovely and pink all the way through, but it's consistent pink. Yeah. Um, and, and just the taste, it, it's, it's, I think it, it transfer, transforms a lot of people into, into rare steak eaters. It's a, Definitely. It's a yeah, good, good transition. So um, we, we touched on it earlier, but um, yeah, it's another thing that steam ovens are good for is reheating food, isn't it? Yeah. And, and and if I'm honest, especially since lockdowns happened, this is the number one function me and my hubby use on our oven. Um, so we have it's called steam regenerate steam regeneration. Um, yeah. And it it's oh, it's just genius. So historically, we, we might have microwaved leftovers, for example, um, and because there's only two of us, we might make food enough for two, three nights and think we'll have that again tomorrow. Um, so we made a lasagna the other week, a nice big lasagna. We had a little bit for our tea one night and we thought, right, let's steam regen um, some lasagna. Um, and it looked 20 minutes it takes. Um, it uses about 50% steam, 50% heat. So it's very similar to the medium humidity setting. Um, but it just revives your food. So you can, it literally puts all the moisture back in. Um, it's like having a, a brand new piece of lasagna in front of you. Um, and Chinese nice. takeaway is brilliant for as well. Yes. <laughs> That's over Chinese takeaway. <laughs> yeah, you could do it with anything pretty much. I think we, yeah. we did a bit of pizza once just to test it and it came out perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Steam regening, it's the future. It, it is like watching those the films that are set in the future where they just put something in a little machine and it hydrates it into this amazing meal. <laughs> yeah, it is... Um, yeah, it's so good. Steam region. No need for a microwave at all. With one of those. No. Great. No. No. Right. So how no. how energy efficient is a steam oven? But yeah, very. I mean, I think you touched on it earlier. The way that the, the water helps and conducts the heat and everything. Absolutely. Very. All our um, AG ovens are A plus, A double plus rating. Um, very very efficient. Um, yeah, right up there they are. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Does it? I mean. It, it's effectively steam cooking. It is lower temperature, isn't it, than a than a standard oven? Um, so that obviously that's going to use a lot less energy, but it does cook it quicker. It does. Um, all our ovens get to temperature really quickly as well. So um, I think there was a witch uh, a witch test that was done a, a couple of years ago now, and Electrolux actually came out number one. So we were the fastest to get to temperature. And when we got there, we stayed within one degree as well. So they did a bit of an accuracy test, um, but very, very efficient. And even things like the um, the pyro clean I mentioned earlier only costs 75 pence to run the pyro clean function. So, I mean, if you compare that to, you know, all that scrubbing and time and effort or getting the man in £150 to come and clean your oven, it's totally worth it. So, well yeah. Worth it. Yeah. All right. Another big seller for us is a, is the old, the old combination microwave and uh, oh. oven, which uh, it, it always amazes me the amount of functions, the amount of oven functions you get on that. It, it is practically a as another oven, it's fully functional with a with a microwave on it as well. Absolutely, yeah. So that literally does as it says on the tin. So it it takes a bit of micro. You can use it for as a standalone microwave. You can use it as a standalone oven. 
Um, if you get the grill function as well, you could, you know, you can use it in that way, or you can use it as a combination of all three. Um, the oven and the, the microwave is, is very, very excellent. And it's really good for cooking things like a full roast chicken. Um, and you can do that in 40 minutes in a, in a combi microwave. So um, it comes out perfect, amazing, because it uses the best of both worlds, the speed of the microwave, but backed up with the, the fan of the oven. Um, you still get that nice brown, um, crispy outside um, chicken. In fact, I've got a really good video. I'll have to send it to you of, of, a, of an example of the chicken being cooked in 40 I've, minutes. Well, I've probably already seen it. I'm a bit of an appliance yeah. geek, so it's uh, yeah, I've probably already watched that. I think I have watched that one. And uh, I thought, I'm going to give that a go. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, yeah. give that a go. Really good for jacket. Do you know something simple like jacket potatoes as well? So, you know, midweek, yeah. You know, yeah, normally you've probably stabbing your potato popping it in the oven for an hour or so you know if you use the microwave in the oven um on, in combination um your jacket spuds comes up comes out lovely so mm. yeah. yeah i can imagine yeah it's a really mm. good good one that i do i do love a jacket potato everyone does simple just keep it simple yeah i really like the um on, on your background there as well there's something to talk about the matte black uh matte black. range it is super we've got it on in our Mac black display in our showroom already so um yeah really really it's going down really well with customers it looked like it was made for that kitchen didn't it, it just yeah it's so oh. such a perfect color match very good and it's <clears throat> and exclusive to independent studios as well along with that five-year warranty so yes yeah, absolutely absolutely, absolutely. i'm yeah. just looking at the wine that you've got the the wine cooler the built-in wine cooler as well yeah coffee machine yeah you've got a sous vide oven in in the range pyro oven you've got the combi yeah um really good suite of appliances there um and it obviously that comes with the command wheel i don't think i mentioned the command wheel earlier did i so the command you've obviously got three different user interfaces on your yeah range of ovens so just take us through those so yes, we have the um, pop in, pop out rotary controls, um, and then we move up to touch control, um, and then you've got command wheel at the top. Um, <clears throat> so pop in, pop out rotary controls, um, really good if you you know if you like to, if you like to touch and feel and and you know if you're used to that type of oven before perhaps and you're not ready to move into touch or the command wheel and you want to stay with something that you know um really really good for that um easy to understand symbols as well um touch control um tends to use a mixture of symbols and some wording as well um so for, to help you maneuver through the user interface um but the, the mama bear at the top the um command wheel um is is brilliant it's a bit like the bmw i drive is the way, the way i like to describe it um, yeah. So literally, you control everything from the command wheel, um, scroll through all the functions, um, really, really easy to understand. So you literally turn and click and push it in and it will select um, the function that you, you, you require. Um, really easy to use. And that, that's, that changed recently to the new command wheel, which is, uh, is a big improvement. It's, it's actually really nice to use the new one. I've, I've, I'm yet to have had to play with it. So with lockdown, yeah. I think I've not yet had a play. Oh, you mean the ones behind you don't work? Yeah, we've got it on the uh, new on the new map black oxes on the map black ovens, and and I've had a little go with it, and it, it is really cool. It's really good, and it's a big improvement on the put on the the older command wheel range. Absolutely. Something else I think that, yeah, they brought in, it's on, it's on the matte black as well. It's coming out on all the ovens is Steamify. So it's um, an even easier way to understand steam and how much steam is needed for each dish. So um, you can literally um, scroll through the Steamify options and it'll tell you what foods it's really good for. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a bit of a spin, actually. So rather than choosing low humidity, medium humidity, high humidity, what we've tried to do is simplify it even more for the, con for the consumer say i'm doing chicken so you'll select chicken and i'll just pick the right level of steam for you or i'm doing i don't think yorkshire puddings are in there i might need to have a look <laughs> um or you, could, you could be doing lasagna and it will choose the right level of steam for your lasagna um lasagna is amazing on quarter steam by the way um good lasagna really good um but then when you couple that with the i don't think we i told you about the food probe as well so we've got the food probe um 
which is is brilliant. That's available on all the um, on all the touch control and the command wheel ovens. So it's mm-hmm. literally it's like a thermometer. You um, yeah. pop into your your let's say I use it on beef on a Sunday, piece of beef all the time. If I want my beef to be medium rare, <clears throat> I'll pop it in. Um, plug it in really easy because it's on the, just on the outside so you don't have to put your hand inside the oven door um, and then you can use um, and, and select I want to cook my piece of beef so you'll select beef from the drop down menu um, in the assisted cooking section um, you'll tell the oven I'd like my beef to be medium rare um, and you literally plug it in hit start it'll cook your beef and once it's done it'll switch the oven off completely so you take it out, let it rest, and you've got beautifully cooked roast beef. Pretty good. The other thing I haven't really had a chance to play around with yet, which I'm re- I'm going to give it um, a good go on a quiet day, is the connectivity where it can, everything can connect to your mobile phone now. So yes. what would be the um, purpose of that? Um, so connectivity... Um, it's quite it's quite new to us so um i think pr- what we wanted to launch it at the right time to make sure it actually had real usefulness for the consumer um mm-hmm. so rather than just being a gadget it has some some meaning um so we um partnered with a company called um in it so it would be like in it yeah uh, and they have an app with recipes and all, all sorts of things and and the app can talk to the oven so if you want to upload recipes or whatnot and everything, and you can actually create your own custom-made settings within the oven and things like that. So if you have a dish that you make or a recipe that you've found or, or whatever it might be, um, it, it will connect to your oven um, that way. So rather than just having it on an iPad so you can watch um, how yeah. your food's cooking, it's got to have a little bit more meaning. So that's kind of the journey we're going on with connectivity. Will it um, generate a shopping list as well? Uh, I don't think we're quite there yet, but there is, I know there is partnerships with um, so some of the supermarkets. Um, I think there might be live yeah. some, in a couple of other countries, but we're not quite there yet. It's we were having this conversation the other day, and I think that's that's where it needs to be yeah. to, to really give it some a proper reason to, to be a smart oven. I think if, if you can decide what recipe you're having and it creates a, a shopping basket for you, you order it, Pick it up on your way home. The up, the oven's going to be set up, ready, and uh, yeah, if I really um, that's. And if you can bring the fridge in on the action as well, so it can find out whether you've got those ingredients already. How cool would that be? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, the, the camera is quite good. I guess if you've got a dinner party on the go and you want to just keep an eye on things and on your iPad, you might have it there, and you don't want to leave the room. I guess that's another. You know, it, it took us a while to work out why there was a. Um, a gap in the uh, like a little window in in the the door because you've got this pattern all across the door apart from this little square with nothing in it yeah. and then we realized the camera was in the handle that is for the cam i yeah <laughs> that's a really good uh place to put the camera that i thought the camera would be inside the oven and i always thought well god but doesn't the lens get splattered and things but putting it on the handle is just a brilliant idea yeah I think yeah, there'll be there'll be more to come on connectivity um, across all our, our products, laundry, dish, everything. But again, yeah, it's getting that that joint up story story right and, and yeah, the software surface. to go with it to make yeah. give it a reason to use it, isn't it? Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, I think right. we've uh, we've covered everything there. So about the uh, cooking, the ovens, and things. So uh, yeah, and we'll look forward to the next time and we'll 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 test your product knowledge on laundry craps next time or something we'll give you a bit more notice (laughs) a bit more notice do your homework yeah definitely on laundry i'm not i won't be as yeah i might i might (laughs) get one of my colleagues to help me with that so yeah 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 Yeah. something i need a lot of help on laundry (laughs) i'm all right i'm all right with in the kitchen but um yeah don't put me in the utility room (laughs) useless <laughs> so uh yeah that, that's about it for episode four thank you again louise for joining us and uh imparting you your knowledge me. on uh, on the fantastic range of aeg ovens um so yeah until next week episode five we've not got anything arranged yet but uh i'm sure uh, we'll let you know what's we happening need to find our next victim <laughs> yeah <laughs> um uh, yeah so until next time it's goodbye from me and goodbye from me 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later.